Hi guys, Darren from Hall of Fame Collection with you. We're at the Indy 500 and I'm sitting here with Indianapolis 500 starter Stefan Wilson. Tell us a little bit about your helmet design for this year, Stefan. Yeah, it is uh, the same helmet design I've used for the last uh, two Indy 500s now. You know, back when I first started uh, racing, back in when I was nine years old, I basically just had hand-me-down helmets from Justin. So <laughs> I would have his exact helmets, whatever he was racing with. Uh, his helmet design and his uh, colors were very unique, easy to kind of pick out. We had a plan of essentially my, my first helmet design was going to be uh, his design, his pattern yeah. with my colors. And we tried that and I was like, you know what, I, I want to be a bit in, more individualized. Uh, I came up with my own design and I stuck with that for, for many, many years. And uh, that was that was my design. Even through Indy Lights, I think, Indy right? Lights and, yeah. and IndyCar. Start your IndyCar career, right? Uh, absolutely, even yeah. that first Indy 500 in 2016. Um, carried that same design uh, that year. We actually did. I did the split helmet with Justin's design on one side and my design on the other. Nice. And then it was 2018. I was like, you know what? I I kind of want to go back. I want to carry Justin's design, but I want to incorporate my colors, which was nice. The original idea back from you know back when I was karting. That's how this design kind of got developed. Looks cool, especially on the new helmet model. The, uh, the GP7, right? Yeah, it's the RI GP7. So it's Justin's exact uh, layout. The only tweaks I've really uh, made to that is the, the Union Jack flag right here. His was literally just half of the flag and then it would cut off and it would be blue all the way back here. Of course, we got the sticker there as well, which shows, yep. shows his classic sort of design. So the Union Jack is really the only part and the Jaguar on top is the only part that really comes from my design and has stayed through. I've kept that same layout and the same colors of the Union Jack. It's always gonna be the same colors, right? Blue and red, but there's a slight um, color palette that Corby uses yeah. specific to the way I, I do the Union Jack on my helmet. Yeah, so. I like as well, like it's kind of recognizable, like the Wilson brothers have got this kind of a this, yep. circle that comes through and um, yeah, no, I think, uh, like I said before, I think Justin's was one that he kept pretty much from the moment he was carding, the first helmet he got, that design is carried all the way through and he never really changed it. You know, those tweaks here and there and Corby added some flair to it here and there with just the way the colors blend, obviously yeah. going from yellow to green to blue and back around again. And that was where these colors that I chose were on the helmet I used for Indy Lights and yeah. started my Indy car career. Yeah. So I've kept those colors, the orange, uh, the black, purple and blue, and uh, managed to incorporate those colors into into that design. Yeah, we got one uh, from 2018 when, when you That's did right. that 500 as well. This will be your fourth start this yep. Sunday. And um, you know, that 2018 was probably the most memorable, right? Stefan Wilson leads the Indianapolis 500. I took the lead on lap 193 and then held it until I had to pit, which was on, I think at the end of 195. So there was One four laps to go at that point. So yeah, it was bittersweet, but at the same time, just an incredible experience and something that I'm striving to get back to yeah. that point. On the top, what's really cool about this helmet is that underneath it's all bare carbon. So it, the base is, a, is bare carbon. Uh, Corby Concepts paints onto that bare carbon and on top you can see uh, the bricklayer pattern and obviously the Cusick brand, uh, the team I'm racing for. And uh, below that, if you look really close, you can still see the carbon pop in yeah, blue, which is really, see it here really too neat. On the side, that's cool. You've got the flake inside the blue, which is uh, again, like the, the colors that I originally went with. So talk us through some of the uh, more um, unique parts of this helmet. Obviously people are familiar with different helmet designs for years. Um, you know, the Arise haven't changed that much over the years, which is kind of nice as well in some ways. But tell everybody a little bit about this um, air intake and how that works and, and how and why you guys are having that now because previously you didn't need it before the aero screen, right? So, yeah. Cool. What's really neat is uh, the way they've uh, redesigned the anchor points for the, for the visor. That's super neat. It makes it super easy to uh, take on and off and get the right uh, tightness for the helmet to make it easy to close the lid, uh, close the visor. Um, we've got the, the fluid logic system here. This is a part that we added afterwards. So this is actually a part of the drink system. Magnetic connection here. So the 
uh, drink, drink hose coming from the car will just magnetically attach and then that hose runs underneath, runs into the helmet underneath and uh, allows us to easily drink and at the same time not interfere with the microphone, which is nice. But it is definitely important just to stay hydrated um, and, and keep that focus up when you're, you're out there running laps over 200 miles an hour. You're actually, your lips get really chapped. Um, you're getting a lot of you know, airflow through, through, the, um, through the vents. It's drying up. Um, so you dry, yeah, you dry it up and you can feel that. So you know, being able to just uh, you know, get a, a nice little sip in just kind of helps bring your attention back and uh, ref refocus. You know, as you were talking about, we've got the, the, all the vent system here in the Indy car now with the aero screen. It kind of creates this negative pressure in there. So it's kind of sucking the air out. Um, and it can actually be hard to, to breathe. You know, you're still getting, uh, there's obviously still air in there, but it's harder to breathe. You can feel it's like more taxing. Like I did ROP on the first day and we didn't have uh, a vent or a hose coming to the helmet. And uh, afterwards you could just feel that you were like, you'd uh, almost like gone for a run like anaerobic. So this serves two purposes. It cools cools the, uh, the your head down, it, you know, blows air in there which is something that you're you're missing now with the aero screen. Yeah. Um, but it's also, you know, making sure you're getting plenty of airflow in there to, to breathe. So when I first used it last year, um, there was too much air being blown through uh, into the top of the helmet. Essentially, it was creating a cushion of air between the top of your head and the helmet. And it was mm -hmm. pushing, like creating a gap and pushing the helmet off, off your head, mm -hmm. um, which was not ideal. It was like being choked at 220 miles an hour. So. Um, got to get that precise and that's um, an important part that we uh, want to make sure is working so you got your tear-offs I mean we still use those just in case you got the arrow screen now so it's not as important as mm. before yeah not as important the first Indy 500 I did um, super important I remember <laughs> Jimmy Vass are telling me a story about his first Indy 500 and how I loaded up about eight or nine tear-offs and on the first lap they all with the buffeting they just all came off at the same time and then the entire race he was just you know trying to drive with this uh massively uh impaired visor so uh first couple nd 500s i did i really focused on on getting this this right and the right amount of tear-offs and in that first nd 500 pretty much the same thing happened to me not on the first lap but it was about 60 or 70 laps in I pulled one and then seven came off. Oh no. So um, <laughs> it was, that was a, a much more important part of the, the equation back uh, without the aero screen. Now the tear offs mainly on there just in case something comes through the vents and, and gets onto the visor. Yeah. You've, you've, at least you've got one, sure. one or two, but it's not as important. Um, more importantly is the tear offs on the on the aero screen itself now yeah that's something that uh, we got the hands clips obviously they clip onto the uh, the head and neck safety system you've got the um, eject system yeah which you could I think the safety crew would push air mm -hmm. through that push it off the driver's head a little bit where there's a bag installed on the inside that's and right. then of course the radio cord yep that uh, that connects to the uh, earpieces and then uh, the earpieece's loom goes through down the uh, down the driver's suit and then out and then that connects to the car. So this doesn't necessarily connect to the car, that connects to our earpieces and the earpieces connect to the car. Great, and you got a lot of sponsors on here. Obviously, it wouldn't, yeah. you wouldn't be in the race car if it weren't for a lot of these partners here and um, Corby Concepts and, and a few others, yep. Chevrolet, obviously. So great to see that support. And, uh, and Stefan will also be running the hall of fame collection sticker on on sunday so we appreciate that mate absolutely hopefully we'll see this helmet with a bit of milk spilt on it. <laughs> that would be ideal yes yeah thanks, thanks, thanks for joining us cheers